Okay, I've been requested to take over on this car. It's a 2017 Hyundai, I think it's a Sonata Sport Edition. Check engine light is turned on. It's got a bunch of codes, uh, 455, something about an EVAP system leak, and there's some other codes in there having to do with the uh, intake manifold uh, variable runner system. Uh, some of these intakes have a like a vacuum or a solenoid actuated uh, loud noises solenoid actuated like flapper valves inside of the intake and those are dual uh, man or dual runners on those intakes where there are shorter ones and longer ones those are utilized for more torque or more higher up rpms and as the engine moves through its rpm range the ecm decides if it wants short runners or long runners and it will actuate those runners and uh, change the length of the manifold tubes that being said this one appears to have a fault with its variable length intake runner system so uh, we're going to move this over to my stall and uh, go check it out and it appears the ecm is already alerting me to an issue we have a flashing check engine light that's telling us that it's got a current misfire and it also currently has 67,879 miles on the odometer backing up the auto so now you guys are up to speed you know what i know so uh let us go do some investigating to the scan tool let's see let's see right there's good powering down here let's just pull this thing down while i go fetch the scanner okay we need our obd2 port beginning communication protocol procedures now beep hey hyundai automatic id please wait satellites linking up in outer space beginning do 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 procedure now looks like we got a 2.4 liter gdi yes and engine codes please show me what has failed its check procedures now okay we've got a p0455 evap emission system leak detection detected large leak p2006 intake manifold runner control stuck closed bank one so the bank one runner flappers are stuck in the closed position according to the ecm we've got a p200a intake manifold runner performance bank one that means it's just not working and a p 1326 knock signal range slash performance now i already heard some business about a gas cap not being here so let's uh let's just address this p0455 right now openings a fuel door and survey says there is no fuel cap so we need to put a fuel cap on that before i can do anything all right, so like I said, that flashing light uh, is usually an indicator of a current misfire. So I backed out of that uh, code menu and went into the misfire counts. And I do not see any current misfires that are occurring with this car. So I feel a little better about taking it out on a road test. So let us go do that right now before we actually get started. The uh, reason that I stopped to scan it before driving it is I just wanted to make sure it was safe and that operating the engine would not have caused any uh, potential damage. It's unlikely, but you don't want to put yourself in a position of liability. Or maybe I should say I don't want to put myself into a position of liability. So my primary reason for this test drive is I just want to get a feel for how this thing runs and drives just to see if the engine is experiencing um, any actual operational issues or if it's just giving us these trouble codes for a failed, uh, failed system check. So I was pulling out here yesterday and a guy that stopped in this turning lane to let me out, but I had my truck and I can't make a single turn right hand, right hand turn right here. Whoa, 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 the car doesn't go anywhere. It just fell on its face. Yep, all right, she's barely going anywhere. We're, we're turning around. It has no power. And I'm also hearing like a high pitch noise coming from under the hood. Oh, it went away. Here, let's go see what that was. Maybe, just maybe. You can hear it again. Yeah, it was like a high-pitched uh, squeaking noise. 
Hmm. No, not right now. Let's go drive it some more and see. Okay, let's go uh, try this again. Even though this thing's running like really slow and doesn't seem to have any power, I'm just going to do my normal test drive route. I just don't want to dart out and try to make a left in traffic. So anyway, as I was saying, I was trying to make a right in my truck and I could not, uh, I couldn't make a single lane right turn and I don't use turning lanes to get up to speed. Yeah, this thing's falling right on its face. This is bad. <laughs> I can't finish my story. Yep. And it's telling me the hood is open. Oh, okay. That high pitch noise was an alarm in here. It's telling me the hood's open. But it's not, because I just closed it. And now it's done. Okay. So, to finish the story out, it's probably boring now. Uh, a guy stopped in that turning lane to... Uh, to let me out but the traffic on his other side was just like flying by and he wouldn't go he was trying to get me to pull out and i wouldn't do it and he was getting mad at me because i wouldn't pull out in front of him but i knew i couldn't pull out and make that turn in one lane so it was it was just an odd traffic experience and i just wanted to share that with you i kind of got distracted with my story from this foot alarm noise thing no power situation uh yeah let's get out of here off the road. How did they even get this car here? And why no mention of this hood alarm? This was not on my list of things that they complained about. Okay, back to safety. Let's, uh, let's get to work on this thing, see what the deal is. Let's get to work on this thing and see what the deal is. Right about there is probably good. Re popping Z hood. Come out. Alright, engine cover. Come off of there. We need to see what uh, treasures lie beneath. Warm. Stay. Okay, here is our intake manifold right here. Air comes in through the air filter. Runs down the tube, down through the throttle body, into the intake, and then up through these runners and into the ports into the cylinder head. This little actuator motor right here is probably what controls the variable flaps inside of this runner. It appears they're running in tandem. There's one link here and then another link on the other side. And uh, our system that is faulty is this guy right here, and it's saying that it is stuck closed. Now, I've just noticed uh, this actuator over here it's also connected to some linkage. Uh, I may be mistaken, and it might not be that unit there. This could be the actuator for the runner system. Uh, I'm gonna go do a little bit of research. I'm gonna pull this up on all data and uh, see what I cannot learn about what's going on here. Uh, but if it is this actuator, I can verify that it's plugged in. And same thing over here with this assembly. If this happens to be the actuator in question, again, I can verify that it's, it's at least plugged in and the wires are not damaged. So uh, that leads me to believe we actually may have an internal fault with the runner system on this. Perhaps they're all clogged up with oil or carbon and uh, the actual flaps cannot move. That is a possibility. Okay, so I've got the scan tool out here and I'm gonna try to actuate that system just so I can see if one of these motors is trying to function. I'm just trying to identify which one of these units uh, is the, the one in question. Uh, also, while I'm here, I'd like to make note that I'm gonna spray this out and clean it up. Um, there's a there's a micro switch in there that's supposed to detect when this is in the locked position and it appears uh, as we saw from our test drive that it is not detecting and it thinks that the uh, the hood is open when it is actually not. So uh, I'm going to try to rectify that. It's, it's kind of a not the issue that we're here for. It's really annoying and I would like to fix that. Anyway, uh, like I was saying, here we are. Variable intake solenoid. This is the only menu that's closed that's might let me know which one of these units it is before I've got to break into the all data and start to start learning about the system. And let's go ahead and start that. Okay, it's going, it's telling me it's going. Oh, there it went. See that? 
So it's moving. That tells me that the ECM is able to actuate it. It tells me that the connectors are good and the actuator is good. So it's possible that the runners are broken off inside or the linkage is broken. That thing does appear to be torquing up a little bit as it tries to move. So uh, I, I think our option here, or our only option here, is to uh, remove this intake and uh, go in and inspect the internals for any actual kind of clogging. Before I do that, I'm gonna go double check uh, the Diag tree real fast to make sure I'm not missing something and then we'll go from there. Okay, so I've pulled up the, uh, the flow chart for that uh, P200A code. It's basically verifying that the system is either functioning or not and it's telling you to either go to the ECM or go to the manifold or check the wiring out. It's giving us a list of possible causes here. PCMA is stuck by carbon or foreign objects in the intake, so back to what we were saying, the, uh, the intake runners are, are carboned up and stuck and not moving. Back connection at the harness, uh, we already checked that and I took a look at the, uh, the wiring harness and I don't see any defects. And uh, of course you got a, a VCM failure. Now according to our documents, uh, this device right here is the VCM. Uh, I do not know why that was actuating when I commanded it, perhaps I was just in the wrong feature. But uh, according to the codes, this is the unit that we should be focusing on and the flaps that are in question are inside. So what I would think we should do is disconnect this unit if I can. Looks like it's one, two, three, four volts. Perhaps disconnect it, then try to actuate it and see if the unit actually works. Uh, once it's disconnected, I can actually probably get my hands on the lever or the mechanism that operates the valves and just verify that the valves are working or not. Uh, that being said, I gotta go let the people know um, we need to get into a disassembly diagnostic at this point. There's nothing else I can do without actually taking things apart. So I've gotta get approval for that. So uh, stay tuned and I'll be right back. Light powering down, saving battery. Well, dang, this did not go as I planned. So uh, the deal is, is, this is a two hour job to go ahead and pull this intake out. And uh, we gave her worst case scenario. Um, now this car is here under the guise of they've got to have it back today. So pulling this apart today really is not reasonable uh, at this current point in time. So what we're gonna do here is uh, basically put this thing back together. We have ordered the fuel cap because that's readily available and uh, inexpensive, they're like eight bucks. So we're gonna throw a fuel cap on there. Um, I am not going to clear out the trouble codes. Uh, one of two reasons. Number one, if somebody else gets a hold of this car before I see it again, they're gonna need that information. And number two, I don't wanna create the illusion that the car is fixed because turning off the light can be received as, oh, no more light, no more problem. And I don't want to set the situation up where it leaves here with the light off and then the light turns back on and, and we just end up in one of those negative places. So I'm gonna leave the light on, I'm gonna leave all the code stored, we're gonna put a gas cap on it and put the cover back on and uh, in a way she goes. And um, I do believe I will see this car again next week. So uh, this is going to be continued later on when, uh, when this thing returns. Having said all that, as always, I'd like to thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, you know the drill. Let me know about that in the comment section down below. So again, and as always, thank you for watching. And most importantly, do not forget to have yourselves a great day. See you guys later. Okay, it's time for a Hail Mary. Let's see if we cannot get this switch to work with some electrical parts cleaner. I'm just gonna send it, blow it out and see what happens. Ooh, stinky. Stuff really stinks. Did it work? Now let's find out. Starting's the engine. I don't see the warning. I'll drive it to confirm, but wow, maybe that actually worked. You know what, I've got time. Let's go, uh, let's go spin through the parking lot real quick. We're still waiting on that gas cap. I recall earlier that warning didn't go off until we, we were riding a little bit, so let's, uh, let's find out what the deal is here. 
Yeah, I can still smell that spray. Nasty. Hey, it still doesn't run. It doesn't go. Go, go, go. Okay, I fixed the warning. Yay. Yeah, this thing totally just falls on its face. I'm giving it full throttle right now and it just won't go. It tried to go. Wouldn't do it. All right, now we are about to embark. Okay, now we are about to embark on the highly technical procedure of installing the fuel tank containment cap 